All right, welcome to day two of unit 10 from home. Today we are just going to focus on arithmetic sequences. So remember, an arithmetic sequence is a specific sequence that has a common difference. Um, we use the letter D to represent that. And remember, arithmetic adds um, in its pattern. And that represents linear functions that we learned at the very end of the last lesson. Uh, and therefore, one person could consider that the common difference could be sort of compared to the slope of a line. So if we look at our first list of numbers, 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, and so on, the common difference to get from 2 to 5 and then 5 to 8 is just adding 3 every time. So our common difference is positive 3. A1, remember, represents the value of the first term, which is 2. And so the next number after that is 5, then 8. And notice that it skips to A7. So we have the first term, the second term, the third, the fourth, the fifth. So if I continue this pattern out, we would have 17, 20, 23. And all I'm doing is just adding 3 on. So 5, 6, 7, 8. So the seventh term in the sequence is 20. Let's do another one. 22, 18, 14, 10, and so on. Clearly, to get from 22 to 18, I am subtracting 4, and that pattern holds true the whole way. The value of the first term is 22. The second term is 18. The third term is 14. So if this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, if I extend the pattern out, I would get 2. Extend the pattern out, I get negative 2. Extend the pattern out one more time, I might get negative 6. So this is the 6th term, the 7th term, and so the 7th term is negative 2. So extending the pattern is useful, useful, if you only have to go, you know, a couple terms past where it leaves off. So like we only had to extend to the 7th term, so we really only had to go two more out. But what if I wanted the 700th term in the sequence? Well, I'm not going to sit here and just do subtract 2, subtract, or whatever, subtract 4, subtract 4, subtract 4, over and over and over again 700 times until I get to my answer. That is absolutely ridiculous. So this is why mathematicians came up with something called an explicit formula. Um, this formula, if you were to be taking your Regents exam, I would say this is on your uh, reference sheet. So you actually would not have had to have memorized this formula. Um, but this topic... This subject, sequences, comes up again in Algebra 2, so that's why we are teaching it to you now to hopefully give you some foundation when you get to a harder level math course. So this explicit formula that would normally be found on the reference sheet would look just like this, except you would have to know what all the different pieces and parts mean. Well, we learned yesterday or last time that that represents any term in the sequence, any term value in the sequence. We learned also last time that A1 represents the first term of your sequence. So basically that's your starting value. Where does your sequence start? We learned that D represents the common difference. And so we learned last time that that's essentially what is it changing by? Is it adding by something or is it subtracting by something? So your common difference can be positive or negative. N is representing which term? Which term are you looking for? Are you looking for the 10th term? If so, plug in a 10. Are you looking for the 200th term? You plug in a 200 for N. So um, N is essentially like your variable. What we used to use was X, now it's N. So let's use this formula. Let's test it out. Here are the first four terms of an arithmetic sequence. For us to be able to use this formula, you need A1, so that's 15, and you need the common difference. So to get from 15 to 21, I'm adding 6 every single time, so my common difference is 6. And so part C says, write the explicit formula. All I need is the value of the next term is equal to 15 plus parentheses n minus 1 times the common difference, and that is it. Now sometimes questions will ask 
to um, find the explicit formula in simplest form. It doesn't always, but sometimes it does. When they're talking about simplest form, let me rewrite what we just boxed in. All that means is we are going to distribute that 6. So we would get 15 plus 6n minus 6. And then we would kind of combine like terms and put it in, for lack of a better word, so 15 minus 6 is 9 mx plus b form. Remember we said arithmetic sequences are very similar to lines. And this looks very much like y equals mx plus b. Remember, the common difference can be compared to the slope. And that's why 6 is where the slope is. And n is very similar to our variable x and so on. So if it does ask for it in simplest form, all you have to do is put it in essentially y equals mx plus b form. So. Use your sequence to find the seventh term and confirm by extending your pattern. So let's do that. Let's find A7. So the seventh term of the sequence is equal to 15 plus. Now, if I want to find the seventh term, I'm plugging in a 7 into my equation. So I have 15 plus 6 times 6 because 7 minus 1, order of operation, says I have to do that first. So now I get 15 plus 36, and 15 plus 36 is 51. This says confirm by extending the pattern, so let's do that really quickly. So if I do 39 plus 6, this was the first, second, third, fourth, fifth. All right, so the sixth term of the sequence um, would be 45. And if I do plus 6 again, the seventh term of the sequence is 51 so I confirmed it and I know you're saying well why don't we just do that from the beginning remember we have this formula in case I asked for a sub 700 you are not going to want to sit there and extend this pattern out to the 700th term you can just plug in a 7 um, and the formula is given to you so it's don't tell me it's that difficult all right Okay, I'm not going to do every single one of these examples. Um, I'm going to do A and B of example four, question four. So it says write an explicit formula for each of the sequences below and then use it to find the 15th term. So just a reminder that our formula looks like this. All right, so let's do letter A. So for letter A, the value of the first term is negative 2, and our common difference is adding 4. Once I have those two things, that is all I need to be able to write an equation. So A n is equal to negative 2 plus n minus 1 times 4. And I don't have to put this in simplest form. It does not say that in the directions. It wants me to find A15. So A sub 15 means I am finding the 15th term of the sequence. So I plug in a 15 where the N goes. And, you know, once you get used to these, if you want to plug them in your calculator all at once, I, I'm fine with that. You don't have to show all of these middle steps. Um, but negative 2 plus 20. And some um, 56. And so my final answer here would be the 15th term is equal to 54. Because negative 2 plus 56. Let's do another one. Um, the value of the first term is 12. To get from 12 to 9, 9 to 6, and so on, my common difference is negative 3. So a n is equal to the value of the first term plus n minus 1 times the common difference. Now, I always put parentheses around my common difference. If I did not, okay, let me get my eraser out. If I did not put parentheses around my negative 3, and I wrote it this way, I hope you all agree at home that that looks like I'm subtracting 3. But that is not what the formula says to do. The formula says to multiply by the common difference. So I just naturally put parentheses around the common difference all the time, whether it's positive or negative. So now when I find the 15th term, I hopefully, oops, minus 1 times negative 3, hopefully won't 
uh, subtract 3, but I will multiply by negative 3. So like I was saying, you can just kind of take out your calculator. Let me turn it on. There we go. You can just type this all in at once. So 12 plus 15 minus 1 parentheses, negative 3, remember use the negative symbol, not the subtraction sign, and hit enter. And bam, there's your 15th term of the sequence. Okay, so you can type that in all at once. All right, uh, go down the page to number 5. Um, you feel free to do C and D if you would like to practice on your own. I'm going to do number 5 because this is asking us a different type of question. It tells us that the fourth term of a sequence is 8. Interesting. That means a sub 4 equals 8. This is representing the fourth term. That's your n value, and the value of it is 8. The common difference is 2. So the common difference is 2, and the fourth term is 8. So here's our formula. a n equals a1 plus n minus 1 times d. We know right now we are given a n in the problem. It's right here. We are given n in the problem. It's right here because it said the fourth term. And they told us the common difference. The question is literally asking, what is the value of the first term? So that's what we're actually going to be solving for here. So the value it has is 8. I do not know where the sequence started. But I know that the fourth term is, uh, or the fourth term is 8, so that's why n is 4, and that the common difference is 2. So I can actually work backwards using our formula. So we get 8 is equal to a1 plus 6, solve for a1, and we get that the starting value must have been 2. So you can always work backwards using your formula too. So if you want to practice that again, feel free to do number 6 because that follows the same strategy we just did in number 5. But I am going to skip down to number 7. To train for an upcoming race, Olivia plans to run 3 miles per day for the first week. Well, you want to know what that sounds like? Three miles per day for the first week? That sounds like A1 to me. The first week, she's running three miles a day. And then she plans to increase the daily distance by a half a mile in each of the following weeks. So if she's increasing a half a mile each week, that sounds like she's adding, so common difference, of a half a mile. Write an equation that would represent the nth term. So that's why we're going to start it off with an a n because that represents the nth term. Our formula is a1 plus n minus 1 times the common difference. There's our formula. What that means is she starts running 3 miles and adds a half a mile each week. If the pattern continues, so she continues adding this half mile over and over and over again, during which week will she have run 10 miles per day? So let's think about that. It's basically saying what term number is it if her value is 10? Okay, so if she gets herself up to running 10 miles, what term in the sequence is that? So we know A1 is 3, common difference is adding a half a mile each week, and I want to know when her sequence gets up to 10 miles. So we are going to set it equal to 10, and we have to solve for N. All right, so distribute that 0.5. So 10 is equal to 3 plus 0.5n minus 0.5. Let's combine like terms. So 10 is equal to 0.5n plus 2.5. Then we'll subtract your 2.5. So this 2.5, subtract it to the other side. Um, I'm just out of space, so think about what that would equal. That would equal 7.5. And then lastly, to solve for n, divide by that 0.5, and I get 
15. So it says in what week? In the 15th week, she'll be running 10 miles a day, which it sounds crazy to me. All right, number eight, if you want to practice that again, number eight is very similar to number seven, so feel free to try that one on your own if you would like. I'm going to move on to number nine. Number nine, the diagram below represents the first three terms of a sequence. Assuming this pattern continues, which formula determines a sub n, the number of shaded squares? All right, so term one is representing the value of the first term, but we are going to count the shaded squares. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there are twelve shaded squares in the first set. Now let's count the second one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Cool. All right, let's count the third term. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yay! So here's our sequence. 12 to 16, 16 to 20. And I hope it's obvious to you as it is to me that we are adding 4 every single time it adds another square. Basically, it's just adding another corner onto our picture. So, uh, determine the formula for the nth term. Okay, so when we are writing an equation, remember we need two things. To write the equation, we need a1 and we need the common difference. Well, a1 was 12, the common difference was four, so our formula looks like this. a1 plus n minus one times D. Now, it's multiple choice. My formula does not look like any one of those four. But what that should look like, if I scroll back real quick, doo, 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 doo. remember when we talked about simplest form? Our formulas look like they are in simplest form. So let's take our equation that we just got and put it in simplest form. And when I do that, 12 minus 4 gives me 8. Ding, ding, ding. And then we have a winner. So if you would like to practice that type of question again, try number 10 on your own. It's very similar to number 9. So we are only going to do one more together. This is number 11. Jackson is starting an exercise program. The first day, he will spend 30 minutes on the treadmill. So the value of the first term, it sounds like, is 30 minutes. The first day, 30 minutes. He will increase his time by two minutes each day. So there's our common difference. Write an equation, TD, the time in minutes on the treadmill on day D. So because they use this notation here, I have to use those variables. I know that we've been using D as our common difference. So if that throws you off, I apologize. Um, but instead of using A sub N, we are gonna say T of D, treadmill time. But our formula is gonna be the same. Remember our formula is A1 plus N minus one times the common difference. So for us, it's now gonna be 30 plus D minus one times the common difference. Now I know that's confusing with multiple d's in there, but it's okay. Here's our equation. Should look very similar. This is what it normally would have looked like if it didn't tell us that we had to use that specific notation, okay? Find t of six. Well, t of six would mean you know, after six days, how much time is he spending? So t of six is just representing the sixth day. So the sixth day means I'm going to be plugging in, oop, not plus sign, what did I do? Should we, yeah. Plus six minus one times the common difference. Looks like he's going to be spending 40 minutes on the treadmill that day, on day six. And again, feel free to try number 12 as well. We are going to do very similar things uh, next time I see you about geometric, but for now, toodaloo!